Today, we will continue with X-ray imaging and then we will finish this lecture for this semester. So X-ray imaging is very widely used in many fields of um, daily life for industry, for medical imaging, for uh, security applications, and also for imaging in archaeology and imaging in historical paintings. So there are many, many applications of x-rays in imaging, and there are also some applications for scientific uh, purposes. So today, uh, I, will, I will more or less summarize many imaging methods. So let me start with that picture. What do you see here? This is a hand and you see picture of the bones here, okay? And there's a ring and this picture is taken by Wilhelm Röntgen. This is the first medical x-ray. This hand belongs to his uh, wife and taken in 1895. So we have discussed the details in our first lecture of this semester. So due to discovery of x-rays, Röntgen awarded by Nobel Prize in Physics in 1901. And this was the first Nobel Prize in the world. So after that, that uh, discovery, x-rays started to be used in medical imaging, okay? discovered in 1895 and 1896, just one year after its discovery, x-rays started to be used in medical imaging. So not only in Germany, but also in Turkey in 1896, just after, just one year after discovery of x-rays, there was an x-ray machine in Turkey, okay? And then um, in 1897, just two years after its discovery, X-rays used for military purposes. Here you see a picture from Serveti Finun. This is a weekly popular journal published in, in, in Turkey during Ottoman times. Okay, and this picture is published in 10 June 1897 and belongs to a soldier, wounded soldier. Here you see an x-ray source, here you see a photographic film, okay? So you can, you can see that how it was uh, spread around the world, okay? So very, very fast. We have discussed the details with the x-ray sources. We produce x-rays, okay? And then here we have a photographic film and here we have a patient. So um, x-rays produced here and then we sent them through the patient and they pass through the uh, patient body and then they reach to the x-ray x-ray film. So what is the main mechanism here? The main mechanism is governed by the transmission. So this is the intensity before the patient and this is the intensity after the patient reaches to the x-ray film. So uh, here we have mu, absorption coefficient and thickness. So uh, each part of body, bones, soft tissues, have different absorption coefficients, okay? And for example, let's consider that here we have different bones let's consider they have same absorption coefficient, but they have different thicknesses. So depending on the different tissues and depending on the thickness, we see different intensities in the X-ray film and we get such resolution. For example, this is a, a Röntgen image of a chest of the patient. So as a detector here, in order to detect intensities, transmitted x-rays, normally x-ray films are used, 
but uh, we have discussed this one also in X-ray detectors. So recently, digital uh, detectors uh, started to be used instead of photographic film. So this is the basic principle of the X-ray uh, imaging or Röntgen imaging. So uh, don't forget this one. But um, in case of Röntgen imaging, it is not so easy to, to um, get good resolution in order to separate soft tissues. So in order to get good resolutions on soft tissues, computed tomography is used. The mechanism is same, but the device is completely different. So here is the patient. And here we have an X-ray source, and here we have a set of detectors, not a single detector. Here we have set of set of detectors, X-ray detectors here. So X-ray source is rotating around the patient, and these detectors are also rotating around the patient with the X-ray source. Okay, so um, then. We can get the cross-sectional images of brain, cross-sectional images of, of the soft tissues for every part of the patient. So uh, what do you see here? This is the first position of the X-ray source and th these are the um, X-ray detectors. So you take one picture, one intensity for that condition and then you move the X-ray source and X-ray detectors to the second position and you take another set of intensities and by using the uh, computer programs, you convert that intensities to the two-dimensional pictures of the soft tissues. This is very widely used in hospitals today, very, very uh, famous method. So, here you see a real uh, computer tomography machine. So um, X-ray source and detector sets are located here and they are rotating uh, around the patient. This was also awarded by Nobel Prize in 1979, Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. And uh, this award went jointly to um, Alan M. Cormack and Godfrey Hansfield due to the de development of computer assisted tomography. So uh, what about the advantages of computer tomography? They can get very high resolution around one millimeter and doctors can separate soft tissues in addition to that, so you, you can get the pictures of the bones, you can get the pictures of the soft tissues. In addition to that, you can also get the um, image of the blood in the vessels, okay, for the angiographic uh, images. This method provides very nice resolution. So um, during taking that images, patient should stay fixed, okay? But we are bracing. So during that bracing, human body moves, right? So it is necessary to hold your brace during, during taking CT, but this recent developments within one a hold of brace, the three dimensional pictures can be taken. So uh, the main disadvantage of Röntgen imaging and CT uh, method is that we use X-rays, okay? So uh, we are using hard X-rays and X-rays are ionizing radiation and dangerous for the body if, if, if you exceed the doses limited for the patients. So it is necessary to be careful with, with that uh, property of that methods. So do you have any question until that point?
related to the medical applications of x-rays. So in addition to the medical applications, computed tomography is also used in security and industrial applications. So in the customs, also in, in airports, in customs, also in the entrance of the shopping centers. So there are CT uh, machines, CT scanners, okay? So you, you gave your rucksack into the machine and they can take the three-dimensional image of or two-dimensional image of your, your goods so they can separate what do you have in your, in your pack. So in addition to that, CT is used in, in industry in order to check the production quality of the huge and com complicated objects. So for example, you, you produce a part of machine and you cannot see the inside. So by using the CT, you can get the three-dimensional picture of, of many type of materials. And then you can investigate cracks or defects within, within, the, within the product. So this is very nice method. In addition to that, CT is also used for reverse engineering, okay, without destroying the instrument or parts, you investigate uh, the, the device or part by using CT and, and, and it, is, it is widely used in reverse engineering. So also for the parts produced by 3D printing, okay, so, let's consider that you have produced that part by using 3D printing and you would like to investigate the cracks and defects or damages or, or, or some malfunctions within the, within the 3D printed part or 3D printed uh, product, then you can use computed tomography. This is a webcam. By using the computed tomography, many um, images of the webcam are taken uh, during the movement of the webcam. Here there's an integrated circuit and, and a board. So there are cables and screws. So you can take the image of all of them by using computer tomography. So you can, you can, you can visit that website and you can watch that uh, video in, in, in the internet. And in addition to that examples, you can find many applications, okay? So there are many uh, literature on that in, in very different fields of industry. Another application of uh, x-rays for imaging uh, used in examination of historical paintings, uh, XRF method uh, has been used to get the um, element specific images of the historical paintings. So we have seen what are the fluorescence x-rays. Uh, we have discussed this one during the beginning of this semester in x-ray matter interaction, okay? So here there is a historical painting, for example, different parts of the painting. So um, by using the XRF, so you, you can get the lead in, in, in that painting, for example. So you can, you can get the picture uh, for, for, for HG and you can get the picture for copper, okay? So uh, this, you, can, you can investigate different elements used in the painting and you can get the mapping of the historical paintings. So normally historical paintings are very expensive, okay? People spend million dollars to buy them, okay? But they must be very careful about the originality, okay? So this XRF helps people to understand that their historical paintings are original or not, okay? So, so you can also use that um, mappings, XRF mappings to save your, your historical paintings, okay? You, you, you store them somewhere and, and then if uh, your painting is stolen or 
um, if you have some suspects on the originality of the paper on the wall, for example, so you can you can you can use that mappings and check the painting again with XRF if this type of features, same pictures can be um, get with XRF, then you can say that your, your painting is original. So uh, you can also find many literature on, on that application of X-ray um, imaging. Do we have any question here? Okay, so another one is um, applications of x-rays in archaeology. This is an um, archaeological product. And by using XRF method again, you can get element specific picture of that part. So what do you see here? Um, this is taken for the zinc energy, okay? So here you can see the same picture. Here you can see the same picture. This picture is taken for the manganese. And here we have for titanium. Here we have for the iron. So, so you can, you can take, take element specific pictures of the uh, archeological products. And you can understand the purpose of that products, why they were produced and which material used to produce them. Okay, so this is also a very important application of X-rays by using XRF method. I remember a documentary related to the um, Egypt Museum. Uh, there was a knife, okay? So, um, and this knife found in the grave of one of the pharaohs and by using XRF, they investigated the material used in that knife, okay? And they realized that the metal used in the knife, not from the earth. It came to earth with some meteors, okay? So you can, you can get such useful information in archeological products by using X-ray imaging, mainly XRF based imaging. Do we have any question here? Okay, then let me continue with um, scientific imaging, which is called as XPIM or XMCD PIM. During the last lecture, we have seen what is XMCD, and PIM is photoelectron emission microscopy. Again, I will not go into detail with the photoelectrons. We have discussed all these things in X-ray metro interaction lecture. Okay, we have uh, discussed the details of the XMCD during the last lecture. So, so we use the same principles of XMCD and we take the uh, images of the magnetic domains by using XMCD PIM. So they provide very nice resolution down to nanometer and then they generally um, give information from the surface to five nanometer you know the reason it is related to the xmcd okay because we use uh, photoelectrons so um, in addition to that we can get element specific images of each element within the material or if we have a multi-layer system with a limited thickness of uh, five nanometer, let's say, you can get the image of each magnetic layer separately. It's because this method is element specific because we use synchrotron radiation, okay? So here you see the uh, basic principle. There is a synchrotron radiation source and this is the beam line, X-ray is coming and you can use right circularly polarized light or left circularly polarized light. And here we have a sample. This is magnetic material. It has magnetic domains, okay? And here we have um, high voltage between sample and um, let's say an electrode here. 
and you accelerate, produce photoelectrons to the uh, CCD camera to, to detector here, and you can get the two-dimensional picture of the magnetic domains. So, uh, what is the working principle? How we can get the um, magnetic domain, how we can get the images of the magnetic domains? So, it is related to the um, principle we have discussed in XMCD. So, it is related to the absorption of the X rays. So, uh, let me draw here. Let's consider that we have a magnetic material here and we have different magnetic domains. Let's consider. Here, the direction of the magnetization is like this. Here, direction of the magnetization is like this. So we have different magnetization directions. Let's consider, okay? So in XRMS and also in XMCD, we have discussed that depending on the direction of the magnetization, incoming polarized X-ray gives different results, okay? So if you use right circularly polarized light or left circularly polarized light, you get different absorption of the X-rays depending on the orientation of the magnetization. So then you produce a different number of photoelectrons. So then uh, these photoelectrons are accelerated uh, by using that um, electron optics, okay? And then you get the two-dimensional image in, in the CCD detector here. So this is very nice, very useful method and um, very important for magnetic domain imaging. And uh, it is also very important in magnetic device applications. So not only for scientific purposes, it is also important for our daily life. For example, in hard disk drives, there are magnetic materials and we store information in magnetic domains, okay? So each domain stores uh, one information. So depending on the orientation, you can store many, um, many information in, into the magnetic materials. So this is the basic principle of the uh, magnetic data storage. So in addition to that, NIF devices based on the magnetic materials. For example, I will not go into detail. This is not the magnetism lecture. So spin transfer torque, spin orbit torque based uh, spintronic devices. It, it is also important to, to get the information about the magnetic domain structure. So this method provides that information. So here we see one example, and this is, I think, my, my last transparency for today. This is a short lecture. So here we will see the element-specific imaging of uh, magnetic materials. Uh, the images are taken by using XMCD PIM. The data uh, belongs to a German group in, in Berlin, in Freie Universität Berlin, so a uh, group of Professor Kuch. Uh, so what we have here, we have a tri-layer system. We have iron nickel alloy, permalloy, and here we have a cobalt. This is ferromagnetic, this is also ferromagnetic, and they are separated by non-magnetic aluminum oxide, okay? So, you can consider that the thickness is less than five nanometer. Otherwise, you cannot get information from the cobalt. So, um, first of all, they take the picture of the iron nickel. So, the method is based on the XMCD, XMCD PIM, okay? So, you, you set the incoming X-ray energy to the iron L3 uh, or L2 edges, okay? then you can get the image of the material. So they got that picture. So we have white regions or gray regions and black regions and also some gray regions within the black region. You see, when they applied magnetic field, they observed that the gray regions in the black region becomes black, okay? Now there is no gray region in that part. And in addition to that, the size of the black region is a little bit increased. If they further increase the magnetic field, they have observed 
additional black regions here. So it means that um, magnetization of the domains located in the gray regions rotated towards the magnetic field. So if you further increase the magnetic field in that direction, the whole the material becomes black, okay? So all magnetic moments, all magnetic moments are aligned along the magnetic field. So we have single domain. Here we have multi-domain. Here we have multi-domain, let's say, but here we have more or less single domain. So when you remove the magnetic field, material goes back a little bit, okay? So if you reverse the direction of the magnetic field here, then you increase the area for the gray regions. If you further increase the magnetic field in the opposite direction, so uh, you see that the um, gray regions are becoming um, greater, let's say. So finally, finally we have a more or less a single domain. So what they have done, in addition to the picture taken for iron or nickel energies, they have also carried out XMCD PIM experiments for the cobalt uh, energies. And they have seen that the domain structure of the cobalt is exactly following the domain structure of the Pamola here. So uh, you, you can investigate the relation between the magnetic domains or magnetization of the materials separated by certain material. So let me also tell you that information here. Um, you can take this data, this data, this data by using iron energies okay, iron absorption energies. But in addition to the iron absorption energies, you can get this more the same data by using nickel, okay, because this method is element specific. So uh, this is the uh, powerful feature of the XMCD PIM in order to investigate the magnetic domains in, in magnetic materials. Do you have any question with that part? So if not, I will finish with that transparency. So let me um, summarize again. So X-rays are widely used for imaging of materials in, in, in industry, in scientific applications, and also for medical imaging, for um, examination of historical paintings and also archeological products. So also for many fields of uh, science and um, industry, x-rays are very useful to get very nice images. Do we have any question? If not, I will close the session. Okay, see you then.